name is Mike McKee. I'm the Director of Admissions here at the Dunn School. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, we have a wonderful program scheduled for you here where you uh, can really learn some more in-depth information about our college counseling program here at the Dunn School. Um, on the call tonight, I'd like to introduce Sarah Harris from the Dunn Admissions Department as well. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Um, and the real stars of this show, uh, Terry Devine is our Director of College Counseling. We also have um, two former and current students on the, on the call here, uh, Charlotte Hecker, who is a current student here at the Dunn School of Senior, um, and then Kaya Crosby, who's a recent graduate um, of the school, and, and uh, I'll pass it over to them later for, for an official introduction. Um, but first, I, I really wanted to start um, by introducing Terry um, and her background. We feel very fortunate to have her here at the Dunn School. Um, prior to joining the Dunn community, Terry served as the Director of College Counseling um, Department at the Punahou School in Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, and previously as the Dean of College Counseling Department at the Francis Parker, Parker School in San Diego. Before joining Francis Parker School, she serves as, as the Director of College Counseling at Villanova Preparatory School in Ojai, California as well. Terry has worked nine years in the college admiss admissions field, serving as the Director of Mainland Admissions for Hawaii Pacific University. Uh, she's very active in the professional organizations. She served eight years on the executive board of the Western Association of College Admissions Counseling, called the WACAC, um, including three years in the president's cycle. <clears throat> she earned the mentorship award from this organization, and she served as the chief assembly delegate for the National Association for College Admissions Counseling, called the NACAC. Uh, during the Obama administration, Terry was selected to participate in several White House convenings on higher education, she led discussions on college access and college counseling. Through First Lady Michelle Obama's Reach Higher initiative, Terry also worked with college professionals from around the country to increase college readiness. Uh, she's been a featured guest on NPR discussing college admissions and in several college counseling blogs and podcasts. Uh, Terry has presented at numerous professional conferences and also worked as an external application reader for the University of California system. A past member of the Western Regional Council of the College Board, Terry served on the College Scholarship Service, the CSS uh, Profile Committee, where she worked closely with directors of financial aid from throughout the country. She served on numerous advisory boards, including Marist College, Lafayette College, several scholarship review committees, and other nonprofit organizations. I don't know how the heck you do it all, Terry, uh, but that's, that's quite the extensive uh, bio there. Um, but Terry, I'd love to pass it over to you. And then um, if you can also introduce the students that we have on the panel, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Sorry for the long introduction. <laughs> I always say if you stick a lot around long enough, then the bio just keeps growing, right? So um, yeah, so I've been doing this work for about 30 years and um, first starting out on the admission side and then coming over to the high school side, we say switching sides of the desk um, in the admissions world. So um, you know, I'm just really excited to be a Don and to get to work with the students that we have here and and the professional community as well. You know, this is um, an interesting time right now in college admissions, as it always is. There's always things that are changing. And one thing I always, you know, hope our families feel here is that, you know, you will never be surprised by things like I want to be there making sure that families know what's happening, um, that students are prepared for any changes that might be coming up in the process. And our program really is a nine through 12 program in that, you know, beginning in the ninth grade year, we're talking about curriculum and creating a four year plan and understanding like what types of courses uh, you you know a student might need and and also making room for changes along the way because especially once we hit I don't know it seems like tenth grade all of a sudden some things start to change and people are like I used to always like math and now I really like history and really I'm exposing them to lots of different options and different types of classes and things like that I think what's been fun about being at Dunn is that students really are encouraged to follow those pursuits that they're really interested in. Uh, I, I was talking to our juniors last week and um, we we're talking about, you know, how do you distinguish yourself in the application pool? And I said, if you want to stand out, stop doing what everybody else is doing, right? Really like lean in and think about what it is that you love and let's pursue that in big ways. And I think Dunn really does encourage students 
on those paths. And I don't see, I've, I've worked at a number of institutions um, and I, sometimes there can be that, that thought of like, I'm going to, you know, play this instrument and I'm going to take this many math courses. And then this sort of thing happens at the end. And, and I just find it done. People are are very comfortable in saying, Hey, this is what I really want to pursue. And, and the teachers and co professional community and everything really gets behind that. I think the students will speak to that too. Um, but going through the program, basically what I want you to know as families thinking about done is that this is a very individualized process. You know, we're going to, like I said, we're going to start early and really thinking about um, what types of things students are interested in and then giving them the opportunities to pursue them. But also for parents, there's going to be parent coffees and things like that to like make sure you know what's happening out there too. And lots of programming along the way, everything from, you know, um, how do we prepare financially for college? And also, if a student wants to play a sport or if they're interested in the arts, pro providing programming for that as well. Uh, you'll probably hear Charlotte and I talk about a case study program that we do where um, students are basically going to be working with admissions reps and going through a mock application and looking at what matters and what maybe doesn't matter as much as they thought. We'll also do things like we have our essay uh, workshops and boot camps for the applications lots of college reps coming on to campus to meet with students and to work with them individually. And I was, you know, back in the day when I visited Dunn, when I worked in admissions, you know, what I thought was just so fun is like, this is a time for me to really get to put a name and a face together. And I, I really like being able to um, be on those high school campuses. And so we welcome, you know, colleges from literally all over the world that come to visit Dunn as well. So they're there. I hope the students also get to see the admissions reps as like they're their partners in all of this. These are the people that are going to be advocating for you. And it becomes less about um, those gatekeepers and more um, helping students to understand that this is an institution that fits them. And we're going to make a connection there. So they'll talk, I'm sure, about, you know, the fit that we will, you know, we will look for. And that's the social fit and the academic fit and the financial fit so that everybody feels as though, you know, I, I'm there to help provide that initial list and then to encourage visits and to, I don't know, be a sounding board when students come back and they say, I really love this place. Um, and let's find some other schools like that too. So I'm meeting with students, you know, individually. And we also have a college class that students go through beginning in the junior year and through the senior year. So basically I want you to know there's a lot of support and um, a lot of time for reflection, for really thinking about what's important to you as a student, as we find this match for college. Right now you're looking for a match for your education for high school. We're gonna do that again in a little bit bigger way when we think about college. So um, Kai is on with us. So Kaya is at Wellesley College. And um, I'm curious to hear from you, Kaya, about sort of your experience. I'd love to know how you felt about your, your college search and then how you felt with going into college as well. Yeah, of course. Hi, everybody. I'm Kaya. I, like Terry said, I go to Wellesley. I graduated Dunn in 2020. So COVID class is a little bit different, I guess, than like Charlotte's experience and anyone else's kids will be but um I would say like my college and my college decision process was very like all-consuming I think it was something that I was like really excited about was going to college and I knew that I think as soon as I got to done and there was a lot of support for that like even like you were saying starting early on like my freshman year but it wasn't something that I was necessarily focusing on as like I'm doing all of what I'm doing in high school to get into college. It was more just kind of like figuring out who I was as a person and looking into see like what kind of things am I interested in and what kind of things like bring me joy in life. Um, who am I? All that big fun stuff. Um, I think that when I was picking schools, I my junior year, I went on like a big college tour in Southern California with a few other people in my class and then my college counselor. And that was really cool because it was like with people that I knew and it was schools near me. And that was like a great way to kind of get my first experience with different schools that weren't UC Santa Barbara. Um, 
And I really enjoyed that. And then my senior year, I was like very much in the college application mindset really early on. I had my college essay finished before my senior year, which was really helpful and something that the teachers had done encouraged doing and like working on it over the summer with you. And so I really appreciated having like a space to go over that with people. I think I went over it with Sarah actually at one point, um, <laughs> senior year, I asked her to read my college essay, but when I was picking schools, I remember feeling like the college counselor had done knew me better than I knew myself. And when it came down to really deciding where I was going to end up, I was choosing between Wellesley and Johns Hopkins. And it really came down to kind of like, I wasn't really sure what I wanted out of my college experience because I was imagining a version of myself that I kind of wasn't. Like I really, at the time had this idea that I would go and be a woman in STEM and just like throw myself into biology and that kind of stuff. And I think that the college counselor knew that that wasn't what I actually wanted to do. It was more just kind of like an idea that I had in my head of like, this is what someone who is successful is doing. And she definitely didn't like stop me from doing anything, but she did really just spend a lot of time to like work through with me, like what do I want out of a college experience and to figure out ways to kind of like find out which school is going to be the best fit for me. She just really encouraged me to go and like talk to people who went to Wellesley and Hopkins and kind of figure out like what their experiences were like. And that was something that was really eye-opening for me because there were like a lot of people who were really willing to talk with me and their experiences were very different than I had imagined in my head. And so I feel like that kind of reality check of like putting yourself out there and like having conversations is really important and something that Don really prepares you for in that they like you were saying to her like they really have you meet people from the schools and the college reps come and like that is so cool to be able to put a face to a name and hear about it firsthand from people who have experienced it a little bit more than you will on like tours and stuff which I appreciate it what was your other question I was just curious to know like how you felt in terms of just your academic preparation too like did you feel like you found the right fit we talked about the social and the academic and the financial fit. Did that fit, did that work for you? Oh yeah, I would say that I was like very academically prepared. I actually remember it being in my first ever college class, and it was a sociology class about social movements. And I had learned a lot of what I was learning in the class, um, my senior year history class. And I reached out to my teacher Dunn, and I was like, "Thank you so much." for <laughs> teaching me all of these things because I feel so better prepared now coming into that. And I feel like what that really has to do is the fact that like, I go to a liberal arts colleges, a liberal arts college and liberal arts colleges are really built around kind of like having an understanding of things from different angles and approaching stuff from like, not just one singular focus. And I think that Dunn does a great job of kind of giving you a really like all encompassing educational experience. And something else that Dunn really prepared me for was kind of like learning how to motivate yourself to do work. <laughs> um, I remember when I got to know I hated having to sit in like a study hall and do homework in the evenings, but it was so helpful to kind of have a time where I was like, this is my work time. And I think that's something I really cared of me coming into college, like academically, as I was prepared to just sit down and like have my work time and be able to do my homework, um, which is harder than you would think. And like, I'm sure you've met some other people that have gone to different schools and things now. Um, what do you feel like Dunn does well in terms of this, this transition to college and in terms of your preparation? Yeah, well, I think transition wise, especially, it was a little bit different for me because it was obviously like during the throes of COVID. But something that I think that Dunn really, really set me up like so successfully for was just kind of like the experience of not only being away from home, but also just being around a bunch of different people who are not that similar to you. And I think that something that I saw my friends, my freshman year struggle with who had like gone to other schools um, and mostly like not residential schools were just kind of like, they had a really hard time like sharing a space or being part of a community where you really had to think about how your actions are impacting other people. And I think that's something that done really does well is it kind of like allows a lot of space for building relationships and like having a community of people who are very different from you, but who you have so much in common with at the end of the day. And like having that kind of support system where you learn how to 
treat people who were raised differently or have different viewpoints or like different beliefs. And I think that is something that I'm like so appreciative for all the time. <laughs> yes, those are good life lessons to learn for sure. <laughs> um, so Kaya, what advice would you have for someone sort of that's, you know, looking for schools right now, um, thinking about college, but what would you tell them? Okay, well, those are, I would say two different categories. I'm having a really hard time like being in the mind of my eighth grade self when I was looking at schools, but I think that it's just so important to find a space where you have the, especially when you're that young, like, I just can't, I, I guess it wasn't that long ago, but like when I look back to like myself at 14, I was so different than I am now. And um, I just think it's like, it's so important to find a space where it's like, you are able to explore all aspects of who you are as a person. And something that I'm really thankful for my experience about Dunn is that it just like you are able to do so many different things and you kind of have to do so many different things. Like I played volleyball for four years and I am not a sports person, but it was just a great opportunity to like be in a space where everyone was like, everyone is doing this and not everyone is the best at it and that's okay. And I was really thankful for that. Um, and so I think that in any search for like the right fit for a high school I think it is just best to not think about like necessarily who you are right now in this moment but like who you are wanting to become and what areas of your identity that you're wanting to explore and then um in the category of like thinking about college that's not something that I was doing in eighth grade I don't think I knew anything about college in eighth grade um but really, it's just like, like, it's so stressful. And I think that every year it becomes more and more stressful and it gets more and more competitive. But what really is so important during that entire, like the search and the application and like the acceptance decision is just having like people around you who care about you. And I don't think I could have done it without that. Um, and I remember like my parents didn't go to college and it was a very, very different experience for me being at Dunn and like having the support of my teachers and my friends and my college counselor for when I was like getting denied from colleges or getting into colleges and having that to celebrate with. And it was very different being at home with my parents who kind of like didn't have that same familiarity with them. And so they weren't able to come at it from the same viewpoint as a lot of people who supported me at Dunn. And I really appreciate like having a space of people who are like, cheering you on even when you get bad news. I remember I got denied from my ED school and that was like so devastating to me. But I had so many people <laughs> at Dunn who supported me through that. And it was like, I'm so glad that I did not end up there. And I'm so glad that I am where I am today. And I don't think that I'd be able to do any of that without the like very individualized and supportive role that college counseling plays at Dunn. Yeah, that's terrific. You know. Um... I always think too, like the process just, you know, it has its sort of ebbs and flows, but in the end you go, this was what was meant to be. And, and then, I don't know, I just, I, I love seeing students in that fall semester after they've gone away, they're like, this is the perfect place for me. And it's just really fun to sort of watch that unfold. You know, I love that. Um, and something you mentioned that I think is is really key as families are thinking about um, what type of school you know might be best in terms of what, what type of high school. But something you mentioned was really important, and that was um, where you're like, I play volleyball. I wasn't a great volleyball player, but I play. And the nice thing about you know the, like a school like Dunn is that it's gonna. We're, we're, everyone's going to be pushed into different places that you're not going to have your natural strengths. Right. And so it's not as though sometimes at larger schools, it's like, these are the athletes and these are the musicians and these are the academics. And, you know, we're at a school like Dunn, everybody's required to do a little bit of everything and to sort of dip your toe into the drama department or whatever, and to, um, and to push yourself into those spaces, but also to know that you're going to have support around you and that we're all in it together and we're having a good time. You know, I may not be the, the I, I'm five, one, I'm not playing basketball, but, but, you know, people will be there to cheer you on and make you feel like you can try different things and not be afraid of failing at things. And that's really fun to sort of see you all, you know, come alive in different ways. It's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's something that I 
miss so much about done is that it's just so small and like it I wasn't afraid to fail at anything in high school and I would say that since I've like gotten to Wellesley it's just so much of it's like a bigger community and I'm like a little bit more scared to like put myself out there often but I think back to the person that I was in high school and I was like very shameless and very, very like confident and I think it was the environment that really nurtured that for me and I, yeah I'm just very glad that I had the opportunity to like be around a bunch of people who didn't really care what I was whether I was like failing at something as long as I was learning <laughs> right exactly yeah and I think you also get a sense of your your voice and the importance of your voice in those smaller environments too right when you're in a classroom and you have eight students you know you're there you've prepared you're you know you're going to be discussing a you know something in history that day or solving math problems together um but understanding the one thing I will say was when I worked in admissions and I would do a lot of interviews with students and it was so interesting because when I would come to schools like Dunn, you know, students were there, they were ready to ask questions. They were, you know, I would, I, it was a conversation. And sometimes when I would visit some of the larger schools where you had, you know, 30 students in a class, it's pretty easy to sort of sit in the back and not really engage as much. And so when I would interview them, you would get a lot of yes and no answers because they weren't necessarily used to engaging with adults in a way that you all are. It's like, well, that's just by every day where when you're in some of those larger uh, public schools, that interaction doesn't happen in the same way. Have you noticed that at college? Sorry, what was that, Terry? Have you noticed like just that interaction with with your professors and things like that? Have you felt pretty comfortable in those spaces? Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, I would say that done also like something that it definitely did that I did not even consider until kind of more recently is that it really prepares you to like speak with adults. <laughs> and that is something that I don't know that my sisters who are going to like our local public school have the experience of because I see them like struggling <laughs> to talk to their teachers or even to like talk to my parents. And um. I just think that the community of like teachers and staff and professionals at Dunn is so supportive and honest in a way that is just like really, really helpful for um, like as you are growing up and kind of figuring out who you are. And it's like you learn how to communicate in ways that I think a lot of high schoolers don't necessarily get the experience to. And I think now I'm a lot more confident to like reach out to professors or go to office hours. I remember like during my first year, I was one of the only people who would consistently go to office hours. And it wasn't even just with questions. It was just because I wanted to like talk to my professors and like hang out with them because otherwise they'd be sitting alone in a Zoom room. <laughs> um, and so I'm just really glad. And now I feel like so much more inclined to reach out to just kind of like members of career ed or I have a lot of friends at Wellesley in the alumni association department and it's just awesome that I like was given the confidence and the skills to do that at Dunn I like still keep in touch with a lot of the um staff member. I mean you know I'm here tonight because I keep in touch with like staff members and stuff and so I really appreciate the fact that they supported me in high school and now are still kind of part of my life even though I'm whatever I guess three years now out of it <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome, uh, Kai. That was really, really helpful. Um, and I want to bring Charlotte in here too. So Charlotte is a current senior at Dunn and in the middle of the college process. So she's filed some applications and we're um, getting some decisions back. We've got some more decisions coming in the next month or so. And so for Charlotte, I'd love to hear from you sort of just, you know, what this experience has been like for you. Um, yeah. So what's, so where are, like, how are you doing and what, what's been helpful to you along the way? Yeah. Thank you for the question, Terry. Um, my experience with the college process, uh, unlike Kaya, I, I kind of stepped into it my junior year, really unsure. I, I wasn't even sure that I wanted to go to a four-year college. I didn't know what I wanted to major in. I didn't, I didn't know anything. I was, frankly, pretty scared of college, intimidated, I should say. And within the process at Dunn, there's a real focus on instead of your, your, your full college trajectory, it's more about learning about yourself and who you are. And that's how I approached the college process instead of 
worrying about two years ahead, right? Because that unknown is really scary to me. Instead, I, I focused more on what can I do to learn more about myself and expand my skill sets and, and, and dive deeper into the things that I'm already interested in. Um, and so that was really my junior year progression. Um, and then this senior year, we had a, um, a college writing workshop at the beginning of the year during our, uh, all the new students are coming in. And that was, I believe, something new to this year. Um, and my experience with it was incredible. It was incredibly helpful, um, not just uh, for like personal development, which it, it, it helped a lot with, but also just the actual like timing of college applications, a lot of the work of writing about yourself, which is not something that students typically get practice in, we're used to writing analytical essays about the Great Gatsby, right? We're not used to talking about ourselves um, and the things that we're interested in, in uh, creative and beautiful and engaging ways, which is really what the college essay is um, meant to do. It's to express who you are and your life and the things that um, are important to you or lessons that you've learned. Um, and so that college writing workshop at the beginning of this senior year was so incredibly helpful because we just got a full week to reflect on um, our high school experience, but also when you're writing a college essay, you're reflecting on your whole life, right? And that's a very serious thing that we don't get practice in enough. Um, so yeah, our, our, our writing workshop is incredibly um, helpful. And then just like uh, knowing that you, like Kaya said, are challenged in so many different ways at Dunn, sometimes it's hard to pin down what I wanna write about, what I wanna talk about, what I wanna, show about myself, right? And so I also got to experience, like Terry mentioned previously, um, the, uh, gosh, what was it called? It's the, like, uh, the case study? Yes, the case, case study, thank yeah. you. Uh, seniors and senior parents, uh, we got to experience kind of a, like, a test case study. Um, and admissions counselors from uh, colleges from the state of California, they came and they pretty much walked us through what the process is uh, for reading real student applications. And the time that is allotted for that was incredibly surprising to me. Um, college admissions counselors get very little time to review college admissions essays. Your whole application is very quickly reviewed. And so it immediately jumped out to me the importance of knowing who you are and knowing the things that you really want to make sure that college admissions counselors know about you. You want that to be the first thing on your application. Um, and so the narrowing down process of the things that really stand out about who you are, are fu fundamental in your college admissions process. And you may be tempted to write a million different things that you do and done. We <laughs> have a list that could go on forever about all of the things that we get to accomplish and do. But really you want to make sure that you are presenting yourself authentically um, and, and really deliberately. Uh, and the case study and the college writing workshop uh, at the beginning of this of my senior year helped with that process tenfold. Well, I'm glad those were helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is true that, you know, that reflective writing piece can be a little daunting for people, I think, you know. Now, Kaya, of course, had her essay published in the New York Times. So, you know, hats off to Kaya. <laughs> and it really is beautiful. You should Google Kaya Crosby and the New York Times and you will see it. It's a lovely, lovely essay. Um, you know, but as, as you said, Charlotte, like you're so used to doing analytical writing and really leaning into this space of being vulnerable and telling your story and knowing what to share. And um, 
that can that can take some work for sure, right? Um, and I I love too that the teachers at Dunn are also there to provide feedback as well, um, between the junior teachers and senior teachers to you know make that also part of an assignment even for a senior year. You have to write your college essay, which is great. Um, but it really gives you, I think, the time and space to work on those things as well. And then to have the reps there for that workshop in August, too, to say, hey, we're reading your essay. It sounds great here. Why don't, can you add more here or tell us more about this? Um, I think getting their perspective is is certainly helpful, too. But I will tell you from the beginning, like, what I love about the process is that sort of arc of really that self-discovery and it's certainly for you, Charlotte, that was, I, I loved watching you go through this process because as you said, it was intimidating at first and it was, you know, it was definitely like scary. Like, I'm not sure what's, you know, what's, what, what, where I'm dipping my toe in here, is this going to work? And just to sort of, you know, watch you sort of come alive in all of this. I mean, you know, you're an incredible student, you're an amazing actress. And, you know, I wanted to reflect back to you all of the wonderful things that you are. I'm like, there's so much, um, so much joy in in you and in your and how you approach your learning. And I knew that would really just come off the page when you started to started to write about it. So I think you did a terrific job. What Kaya said could not be more true. College counselors know you better than you know yourself. <laughs> um, and because I, I and I think that's true because within the college process you're thinking so much about yourself that you don't stop and realize like, how do other people see me? Like I go to school every day and my teachers experience my writing. They'll probably think it's pretty good. Like it's such a process of like, self analyzing that we don't stop and think about like, what do we actually bring to our community, our school community, but also beyond. So yeah. thank you for your <laughs> words, Terry. <laughs> Well, and for you and for Kaya both, I'd love to hear too, maybe about sort of like, and Kaya, you mentioned too, for your parents, this was kind of a new thing for them of, of, you know, having you go through this college process and Charlotte, like with your mom, like what is, like, were there, I mean, I, like, I want to know, did, did they feel supported too? You know? Uh, I, yeah, I can go <laughs> first. Um, yeah, the the parent aspect of college counseling is always kind of a slippery slope sometimes for students. And that's only because parents have their own concerns and worries and that's incredibly valid, right? And I had a hard time embracing what my, my parents' wishes for my education. That said, there's balance, a, a really fine balance between what parents want and what students want and the combination of those two and 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 the compromise it, what for me was probably like one of the easiest aspects of the process because once terry helped me communicate with my parents what i wanted and i wanted to stay in california or on the west coast and i, I didn't want to go all over the country and but they didn't even know that right and so i hadn't communicated that to them once I did, they were so understanding, right? And that was just my process. Kaya, you, I don't know if you had a different experience. Charlotte, I think what you said was beautiful. And I don't know that I have a lot to add. My parents were not super involved in the college application process because they didn't have to be. Like, I think if I was home and they had had to be, they would have not really loved that. <laughs> um, I think there were a lot of opportunities in which they could have gotten involved should they have wanted to but they just didn't um but that being said I they were very happy that I'm happy and that I ended up where I wanted to be and obviously like I think my college counselor probably knew me better than my parents did like Charlotte was saying it's kind of like they just know you so well um, by the end of it um and I remember after, like, I so graduated in 2020, and it was COVID, and it was lockdown, and it was sad. And I remember my mom, who wasn't super involved, but had a few, like, parent friends at Dunn who weren't, like, who, yeah, parent friends at Dunn. She had a little, like, end of the year graduation slash, like, college acceptance dinner 
over over Zoom because it was COVID. But it was with me, um, my advisor, Mr. Vashon, um, and then um, a few other student friends, uh, like another parent at Dunn, and also Miss Berg is the other one who I was thinking about, which was just really nice because it was kind of a way for me to see how my parents were like not super involved in the process itself because I'm like a very, I, I was very independent but in high school. I kind of did my own thing and was very self-motivated, but um, like they still were able to celebrate that and they were able to kind of like be in connection with those people who were a part of my life, but not necessarily a huge part of theirs. But snaps to what Charlotte said, I <laughs> think that is so valuable. I mean, but that was your family's balance of the process, right? It, every family's different and every student is different and, and the things that they want are different and so it just so happens that it worked out beautifully for your family and I think the same with mine yeah that's so I mean it, and I hope the families that are on are sort of hearing too the you know the different experiences that students will have right you know for sometimes a day student versus a boarding student even right um where sometimes with boarding students it's a little more independent um, the work that you're doing. But at the same time, I will tell you everything we do, like all the programming that we do in the office is always um, on Zoom for parents. It's recorded so that everybody can feel involved in things for sure. Um, and really there, there's just, I was meeting with some junior parents today and they said, so, you know, is this our only meeting with you? <laughs> I said, are you kidding? <laughs> I was like, no, you can meet with me whenever you need to. And they were like, like really we could actually I said if you said if you said to me on I need to meet with you every Friday at two o'clock we'll put it on the calendar like that's how accessible this is like we're you know we're here to help you and I was like I know you won't actually need to do that but if you do I that's what that's what we're here for so um which you know when you're looking at different types of schools you'll you know, one of the questions, listen, I, I always ask at schools is, you know, what's the caseload for the college counselor? And, you know, at Dunn, we're at about 35 students, right? That's, that's my caseload. And I'm, you know, and, and I, I, you know, I want to know that I'm getting to know each and every student really well. Um, some of the work that I do that, um, that Mike mentioned nationally is really, um, and it's really like the, my life's work. I mean, I'm very, it's very important to me, but understanding that in our public schools in the US, it's just a very different experience than in the private schools. Um, in California, the average caseload usually ranges between 900 and 1,000, 900 students to 1,000 students per counselor. And so when you think about just, you know, the time that I get to spend with students and getting to know them, get to know their families and thinking about what type of school is going to fit them, you know, it's and helping with financial aid, the process and helping to explain the FAFSA forms and all the other things. Um, I, you know, I feel very, very fortunate that I and privileged that I get to do this work with these, this amazing community. But um, I also volunteer a lot of time you know, right now I'm training um, counselors in the Riverside School District and helping them to understand the college process so they can share that with their students and really trying to train up new counselors and things like that. But it's a it's a really difficult situation. And I, I, I wish that, you know, all of the schools had access to people that could help students in this space, because I, you know, I know for me, it was really important in my life. And um and the joke, I mean, you know, my husband, and I joke all the time about in my high school yearbook, it says, you know, what do you want to be, whatever, when you grow up? And mine says, I want to be a high school counselor. Like, I love this work. It's super fun. And I also knew that that wasn't available to me when I was growing up. I thankfully had parents that could explain things to me. But for my friends, we would literally look at a book and look at colleges. And it was, there was no one really helping. And so I feel very, very, very fortunate that I get to um, share this incredible time with young people like this. I mean, they're amazing. <laughs> they're so fun. So I want to make sure we have some time for questions. If there's anything in the chat, Sarah or Mike. Yeah, Terry, one came through. Um, do you have any thoughts around the current landscape uh, for standardized testing as a collegiate admissions lens? Do I have thoughts? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> you can always count on me. Yes. So 
Um, we are in an interesting time right now. You know, here in California, we have um, a very large public system, the UC system and the California state system that have said, going forward, no more testing. We're done. It's out. Um, and, you know, I think that's that's interesting. And we'll see, you know, I people are asking me, they say, well, okay, well, if they don't have testing, um, what else are they looking at? And I'll say, this is what colleges always looked at. They look at the transcript. The transcript's always the most important thing. And we would always use testing to sort of validate what we were seeing on the transcript. And if we saw some sort of disparity, then we would probably dig a little bit deeper and go, hmm, I wonder what's going on there, right? So the transcript's going to always be sort of the, the really important piece of this process. Um, and it's important to know, listen, Colleges, there were there's a, so many uh, colleges that were already test optional or test blind even before the pandemic, um, and some that have never required testing because they didn't see it as something that was useful to them and would give them insight into students' success long term. Where the transcript always did, you could see what there were some you know variations and things like that, and where a student's academic strengths were. So um when when colleges had to pivot and go in and become test optional because the tests just weren't available it serves them well okay and and this is why colleges have been kind of quickly jumped into that space because they can now say if i'm test optional well um the only students that are reporting scores are the really strong test takers, right? So now if I'm a college, I can say our average SAT score is a 1450. <laughs> like, okay, but two years ago it was at 1150. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's understanding that their rankings sometimes are based on things like that. So it serves them well to say, now we have a higher profile. Did it make them a better school? No, they're still the same school they were. They just don't have the testing. We'll see that we've had some states, um, so Florida, Georgia, and Tennessee require testing, and they, they that's their state has, has determined that Georgetown and MIT have gone back to requiring testing. I mean, you know, colleges are going to do what makes sense to them, but for the majority of of schools, I feel like we're going to be in this test optional space because it does serve them um, for quite some time. I don't see a lot of schools moving back quickly um, into requiring testing, but like I said, some will because their their state legislature has said they have to, um, or it's just a really big part of their process. So, but I don't know. We will see. Stay tuned. <laughs> And Terry, along those lines, if schools do require standardized testing, um, is there any test prep built into our curriculum or program that we help students with? Yeah, so um, the test prep piece is interesting. So if you, you know, listen, I've spent a lot of time working with the college board who runs the SAT and and done a lot of work with ACT. And they will tell you the best, the best test preparation is to take a challenging curriculum. <laughs> That's it, right? Because you can study the test all you want, but if you don't know the information, you can guess C on all the different things, but like you're not necessarily going to learn more. The way you learn more is by taking challenging classes. So that is inherent in the done process. Now, um, is in terms of test prep built into the curriculum, um, you know, there are teachers that basically will weave in different types of in math, especially weave in different types of, of questions that are they know will appear on tests and things like that. Um, but the test prep world has really changed a lot, too. Right. Because with the test optional thing going on and places like Khan Academy, like it's wonderful. Students can take a practice SAT or PSAT, link it with Khan Academy, and it creates a free online prep program for them. Right. And it says, hey, these types of, um, you know, English questions are giving you trouble or maybe this algebra two question is, is not working if you don't understand the concept. So it's going to keep like sending questions your way until you get it right and show little videos of how to work this problem or how to tell the difference between who and whom. Right. So if this is the fun stuff that's really changed now um, in terms of what's available for free on the internet. So some of the big test prep companies, oh, they're 
there's they're really looking for new angles right now because all those big classes that used to happen i know they're still out there um, but students are pretty good. I, I, I was surprised, to be honest, at Dunn, how many students were like, no, I do my own. Like, I've got my own prep. And they don't need someone to hold them accountable by going to a class every Saturday. So, but again, it's an individualized choice. And for students that do want to do more of a prep class, there are certainly plenty around the area for students that want to do that. I can quickly attest to uh, just recently this year in my math class, uh, during like SAT, ACT season, uh, my math teacher has kind of weaved in a practice test curriculum, not uh, like a full practice test, like it's not carved out, but uh, he definitely incorporates uh, material that is seen on both tests. So it's like Terry said, not an actual class, but our teachers make sure to try to give us like some kind of preparation if we are taking it. And even if we aren't, it's still applicable to the class. So uh, yeah. Awesome. Um, Terry, another question that came in. I know we have like uh, this year, we had a lot of students go early decision, early action, all mm -hmm. of that. But how are you feeling about um, what the news that you're hearing so far, uh, where are kids applying to, or where are you seeing any trends and um, any good news that's coming from that? Sure. So, um, you know, there's been a big push, I will say, you know, in the last five to 10 years, especially um, toward kids moving uh, to applications that are happening a little bit earlier and typically in, like a November 1st deadline. And there is early action and early decision. They're different. You know, but one of the things that I saw coming in was I, re I really wanted to, to look at the strategy. I, you know, I'm a I'm a spreadsheet girl. I love to have my data, right? So, you know, looking um, at a student's profile and then trying to determine what's our best course of action through the process. Where are we likely to, to um, get some good news coming back? So, and for some students, those were in those early pools. For some, that was in the regular um, application pool. But yeah, we've had, I think, some nice, um, some nice decisions coming back so far. I think we probably had about 25% um, of the students do early decision, which is a binding agreement. And, but that's for students that are like, I know for sure, like this is a school. I've, I've, I know this is the one for me. I've done my research and I'm ready to make a commitment if they admit me. Um, and there can be some help in the applicant, in the applicant like process to, to be willing to commit early decision. Um, but beyond that, just the early action of just saying, Hey, I've, I want to let the school know that I'm out there and I'm interested. And um, so we had some nice, you know, news coming back early action as well. Um, so but for me, though, it is strategy and that but to me, that's like my job is to sit with families and like really talk through all the options and make sure that we're creating the best pathway through it. Um, yeah, but I would say almost I would say 90 percent of the students did something early. So. Yeah. But the thing is, we're preparing them for that process too, right? So like right now with my juniors, we had class already. We already started our junior class, uh, college counseling class, and our individual meetings. We'll do a workshop. Like Charlotte mentioned, we're going to do that in May with, you know, completing the common application, essay writing, practice interviews, and then hitting that again in August, and then some classes as well and individual meetings. And then they're ready. I mean, it's, you know, by November 1, they're like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> Kaya, did you have your hand up? Yes. Okay, so like I mentioned briefly earlier, I did apply ED to a school that I got denied from. And that was like the most devastating thing to ever happen. I mean, like top five saddest moments of my life. Um, but now I'm, like I said, I'm so thankful. I am so glad I didn't end up there. But something that I really appreciated about the nature of Dunn as a small school and the fact that your college counselor is only handling like 35 students who she knows like very intimately and well um, is that they also just like, my, I remember like during my experience, I got denied. I was very, very sad. But my college counselor was able to kind of have like more of a... Um, communication like with the admissions officer as to why and like what went into that decision and so I was able to get a little bit more clarity on kind of just like the reasons and the situation behind it and that wasn't like oh I'm a terrible person I'm a horrible student they didn't want me it was more like a numbers game 
at the end of the day. And I just like it made it brought me so much peace <laughs> knowing that and being able to kind of like have that conversation with her and know that like she was out there and like rooting for me no matter what. And um I think that it's just like so special to be somewhere where it's like small and they're able to have those relationships with you, but also with like the counselors and the admissions officers that they're working with. Yeah, I always think it's people would be surprised to know just how much interaction there is between, you know, like the college counseling office and the admissions office at a university. Like we're, you know, we're in touch. Um, we, you know, I got a call the other day, someone needed grades or like, this looks really good. Um, we just had an early decision to came through for Washington University, St. Louis. And just the week before we were on the phone and they're like, just want to check in on some grades right now, make sure everything looks good. Like everything looks great. So, you know, but it's just this um, for many, you know, for listen, when you've been around a long time, like those are also people that I used to work in admissions with back in the day. And now they're the vice presidents of enrollment at different universities. Like, like with Kyle, when I asked you if you knew Joy St. John, who was your director of admission at Wellesley and is now going to be at Harvard. She and I worked together in San Diego on a number of projects back in the day. So it's just, it's a, it's a very small world and very small community. And, um, and I think we also trust each other. So when I'm writing that letter of recommendation, they know that I know that student well and that I can advocate for them and, and tell the story. So, yeah. Very quickly, to Kaya's point um, about just the, the closeness of Dunn and, and, and how it's so small, I would say that the small classes particularly, I think prepare students for both maybe a more a smaller liberal arts college setting and for bigger universities. It goes both ways because within small classes and a smaller school environment, you are more accustomed to your learning style and how to advocate for yourself. And, and, and those are skills that you need regardless of where you're going, right? And so also Terry brought up the fact that kids that go to bigger schools, right, can't have a harder time advocating for themselves. And so I would just like to reiterate the fact that our, at Dunn, our small classes really prepare students for the process of advocating for themselves, regardless of where they're going, um, which will benefit them throughout their life. Um, and I feel clearly happy that I've gotten to experience within my education. So just really wanted to add that. <laughs> Okay, I want to add on to that. You're right. I've been focusing so much on like, oh, I go to Wellesley. It's a little tiny college. Um, but I also do like Wellesley has a cross registration with MIT. So I've taken a bunch of classes at MIT and like UTS in there. And I think it's like the dynamic of a larger college is so different from where I'm at right now. But it's also still it's kind of like back to that. You're comfortable advocating for yourself. You're comfortable communicating with professors. You want to like build that relationship that you had. Like, I don't know. I mean, I want to build the relationship that I had with my high school teachers, like everybody. Um, and so just kind of that, like the confidence that it builds and the ways that it really teaches you just to kind of like, I've said communicate many times, but communicate and, and be open and be brave enough to kind of like raise your hand in class in a large class or approach a professor one-on-one -on -one individually, even though they have like 200 other students. I think that's really helpful, you know, um, and I think, it, you know, when you all launch off from done, taking those skills with you, and I think especially if, you know, listen, if, if for students that are here in California, it, a lot of them will say, hey, I, I, I have, if I get a spot at UCLA or Berkeley, that's a great option for me, and it's a great financial option, um, and, but I also know that even though they're going into these larger spaces, they know the power of their voice, and they know how to set up office hours with their professor, you know, so I, I, I feel like students are just well prepared for what, whichever choice they make in the end, you know. Absolutely. Well, we are uh, haven't had any other questions come in. Um, so I think we're, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, but a huge thank you to those of you on our panel tonight. Um, yeah, Terry. Kaya, Charlotte, you guys were incredible. Thank you for, for um, sharing your time with us. To all of our participants on the webinar, uh, families listening in, thank you for taking time out of your evening 
um, to learn more about our college counseling program. Um, please be in touch with any of us if you have any questions in the admissions office. We're happy to share Terry's contact with you as well if you wanted to reach out to her directly. Um, but yes, huge thank you. Well done to everyone. And uh, I'd like to wish everyone a wonderful evening. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. Bye, everybody.